All day long, we have been watching some of the videos and pictures coming in from Puerto Rico, and we want to talk to an expert right now. We have Gavin Hayes joining us from the United States Geological Survey. And Gavin, this was an aftershock to the main one, which was back in January 6th of 2020. Is it common to have one this far apart and also this strong? It is, yes. Aftershocks uh, for sequences like this can, can last for months, many months. And how much longer could the threat go on for parts of Puerto Rico after these large aftershocks, or are we getting close to having this end? Unfortunately, um, in, in situations like this, while the uh, probability does diminish with time, uh, there are still chances that um, moderate-sized earthquakes like this can, can happen for, for many months into the future, or even into next year. And I know there's several different fault lines that are in Puerto Rico that go across the island. Is this one that's typically active? And how would that compare to, say, here in the U.S., the San Andreas Fault? The south side of Puerto Rico it, it, it typically has, has quite low activity. They have a history of some small uh, to moderate-sized earthquake swarms, but nothing of the level that we've really seen over the past several months historically. And that's, I think, why one of the reasons why it's had such a, uh, such a large impact. Um, because people on the south side of the island aren't as used to feeling earthquake shaking as they are perhaps on, on the north side of the island, where the threat to, uh, of, of large earthquakes is, is more significant. And it's quite different than what we see in California, where there's a, a major plate boundary uh, system um, between the North America and Pacific plates uh, running along the, the San Andreas Fault. So people there are obviously very used to feeling earthquake shaking quite regularly. And Gavin, when we're looking and focusing in on earthquakes, is this something that some of the surrounding islands should be on alert for with these aftershocks or even as far as Florida, for example, in the U.S.? Well, in, um, in the Caribbean, they're, they're quite used to earthquakes. They, they happen very regularly. There is a large plate boundary system through Port, Puerto Rico, um, and, and so people in the region should always be uh, ready to... Uh, 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 protect themselves from earthquakes, drop cover and hold on, um, get under uh, large large objects and, and wait out the shaking and have safety kits so, so that um, you can survive uh, for some time uh, after, after you feel earthquake shaking in case authorities are una unable to get to you. In Florida, the situation is, is, is uh, less threatening and they're quite far away from where significant earthquake shaking can happen. And we've been just going over some of those safety tips. I know you mentioned have a plan in place, and we spoke earlier about some different things you can do, like have shoes on your feet, for example, or have maybe a coat nearby if you're somewhere where you need that. Do you have anything else you want to add to some safety tips for everybody in the U.S. or the Caribbean islands in case we have another strong earthquake? I, I think in general, just having a, a, a preparation plan uh, is good. Have, have a safety kit, have torches available, have um, some, some first aid available, have some food, have, have, certainly have some water. Um, just know what you're going to do in the event that you feel earthquake shaking so that when it happens, it's not um, perhaps as, as scary as it might otherwise be. We really appreciate it. That was Gavin Hayes joining us from the USGS. We're going to continue to follow this here on Weather Nation. And if you'd like to get more updates anytime, you can always head over to weathernationtv.com.